Hi guys, in this video we are going to be talking about resonance via pattern recognition and then once we figure out those patterns and how to push the arrows, we then have to assess the importance and figure out which ones are the best resonance structures of uh, the molecule that we're looking at. So here are the five patterns that we are going to use to recognize resonance in molecules. These five patterns will be applicable for any molecule you look at and you just need to be able to use these patterns to recognize when a molecule does have resonance. So in our first pattern here, we have an allelic lone pair. And remember that all that allelic means is that you have a lone pair that is one carbon away from a double bond. So you can see the double bond there and we have a lone pair one carbon away from that. And so um, you can see in all of these examples that this is the case. Whether it's a carbon or an oxygen that has a lone pair, they're all one carbon away from a double bond. So you can see in these examples here um, that you have your lone pair and you're going to move that lone pair over to create a new double bond. And then the existing double bond is actually going to push over to the adjacent carbon um, and that is going to put a new lone pair on that carbon. Um, and so you can see how the arrows move throughout all of these examples. And the most important thing is that when you're drawing the result of these arrows, that you check the charges that go along with them because they will move as you move the electrons throughout the molecules. So here we have the result of the electron pushing that we did earlier. Um, so take a second and look at these examples and see if you can follow the arrow um, the arrows that we drew earlier, and if not, there is another video on um, on electron pushing and arrow pushing, and something else to look for are the formal charges. The formal charges will change as you're pushing electrons throughout a molecule, and again, there is another video on formal charges. If these two concepts are a little bit confusing, you can always go back and watch those previous videos. So now we're going to talk about an allelic positive charge. Allelic is the same definition that we just described. It's going to be one carbon over from a double bond, but in this case, it's an allelic positive charge. Um, and so we're always going to treat a positive charge like a hole that we can fill with electrons. Um, and so you'll see in the examples that I'm about to show you, um, with an allelic positive charge, we're always going to move the electrons towards the positive charge to fill the hole. So you can see here that we're moving the double bond to create a new double bond. And there's always going to be one arrow. And you can see that with all of these examples here. Um, and so remember that these are patterns. And so it's going to be the exact same every single time you do it. And then another thing that you always want to check for are the formal charges. Um, again, there's a video about formal charges that you can check out. So the next pattern is going to be a lone pair adjacent to a positive charge. So adjacent means one atom away from the lone pair in this case. So you can see here you have a positive charge and it is one atom away from the lone pair. Um, and so again, for this example, same thing, your oxygen has the lone pair and then one carbon away, you have a positive charge. Um, and so in this case, you're always going to move the arrow from that lone pair again towards the positive charge because the positive charge is like a hole that you want to fill. And so this pattern has one arrow as you can see in this example. So now let's talk about the second example. Again, you see you have that positive charge adjacent to the lone pair and we have that one arrow that moves the lone pair towards that positive charge. Um, and again, you want to check your formal charges after you do the arrow pushing. So our next pattern is going to be a pi bond between atoms of differing electronegativity. So in this first example over here, we have a carbon with a pi bond between it and a nitrogen. And as you know, nitrogen is much more electronegative than carbon, and so that fits the bill. Same thing over here, we have a carbon um, with a pi bond between it and an oxygen. So both of these examples show this pattern. So now let's talk about the arrow pushing of this pattern. So in every single case, you are going to push the electrons from the double bond up to the more electronegative atom, creating a new lone pair on the electronegative atom. 
And so again, check your formal charges. Um, and then on this example, same thing, arrow goes from the pi bond to create a new lone pair on the more electronegative atom. And our last pattern is going to be a conjugated pi bond enclosed in a ring. And so all that conjugated means is that you have pi bonds separated by one sigma bond. And so you can see in the example that every other bond is a pi bond and every other bond is a sigma bond or a single bond. Um, and so this is the stipulation for this pattern. And so for this one, it's pretty simple. You're just going to take the pi bonds in the conjugated ring and you're going to push them all over one spot. So now that we know how to identify resonance and draw the correct resonance structures, we now need to take all of the resonance structures that we've drawn and assess the relative importance. So which one is the more important molecule that we drew? And so there are three rules to help determine the significance of the resonance structures. The first rule says that you want to minimize the charges. And so if you have multiple resonance structures, the more significant one is going to be the one with less charges. Um, and so more than two charges in one single molecule is not going to be a significant structure. The next rule says that electronegative atoms such as nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine, um, they can bury positive charge but they can only have a positive charge if they possess an octet of electrons. And so you wanna be able to count the electrons around the electronegative atoms and be able to say, okay, that oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. Um, and so it is able to have a, a positive charge. And our last rule says that you need to avoid drawing resonance structures in which two carbons bear opposite charges. So you can see that in this molecule below, you have two carbon atoms that both have charges and they are opposite charges. This is very unfavorable. Carbons don't really like having charges in general. And so the fact that they're two different carbons and they both have charges on them um, and they're opposite charges is very, very unfavorable. And so something to clarify too, any resonance structure you draw that might break one of these rules is still a resonance structure. It's just not the most important resonance structure of that molecule. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what organic chemistry one class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu tutoring. You may schedule a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.